What have we got? What have we got in the CD player? Chick Flick Diaries. Awesome. <laughs> Chick Flick Diaries and Heart. Not making assumptions here, but. Hello there, and welcome back to my channel, Rover Turbo. In this video, a new video, I'm going to pick up a new car. There's no point giving it a secret because it'll be in the thumbnail. So it's an Audi A4 uh, convertible. I'm um, just waiting for my lift now just to go and pick it up. It's not exactly a non-runner, but I think it's got running. I think it's got running issues. So it, it was working fine and then it wouldn't start and now it does. So I was just going to go and pick it up, but it just seems a bit of a risk. It's not that far away. So yeah, so follow me along with this video. Um, when I get it, I'll have a good walk around it and tell you about it. And um, we'll see you in a bit. All right, so we're back home. Easy journey. Actually, it's quite in good condition. Can't see any major damage around it at all. We'll do a proper walk around in a minute, but. Smile for the camera. <laughs> so yeah, it's actually in pretty good condition. So we'll get it unloaded and then uh, we'll have a proper look around it. Bit noisy, isn't it? Yeah. To be honest, I think they are though. I think they are quite. Sounds like there's a bit of a vibration coming from somewhere. I think. Yeah. Right. So we're back from picking the car up. I made myself a cup of tea. So just going to have a good look round it and. Uh, show what it is and uh, see if stuff like the roof works and stuff I've no idea I haven't haven't looked at it so uh, right let's uh, let's do that now right so as you can see 2008 an Audi A4 S line it's the two litre diesel which is the PD engine, which is one of the most reliable Audi engines that they did back then. Automatic. I haven't driven this car. I can't even remember if it's got any MOT left on it. I believe it has. It's got six months left on it, something like that. It's in pretty good condition. Obviously it needs a wash, but I can't see any major damage, scratches, dents or anything. The wheels look in pretty good condition. discs and stuff look in pretty good condition and at first glance the tyres look good a bit of scoring on those discs nothing to be alarmed about Tires a bit now, yeah, tires on the tread wet. It's just that one tire. What have we got in here? Auto lights. That is. Glow box lid is missing. It's 
So we got 128,000 miles. Ah, well there you go. Trade contact of mine, took it in part X from a customer, drove it around the block, everything was fine. Came back, went back to start it, wouldn't start. Just cranking. So he was selling it as a spares or repair basis based on that information. I wasn't that interested in it because it wasn't running. Kind of was interested, but I don't really need any more cars at the moment. But he then came back and said, oh no, it, 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 now, it now works. It now runs fine. So no idea what that could be. So it's, it started when we got there to get it on the back of the truck. It started just now to get it off the back of the truck, but I've just come back to it five minutes later and now it won't start. <laughs> so it's just cranking. I need to get my diagnostics out, plug it in. Uh, I have heard rumors about injectors, shorting, um, pump in the tanks. So I might give that a bit of a bash with my hand and see whether that maybe kicks the pump back into life. I don't know whether that's supposed to do that. battery in there isn't they? <laughs> it's not meant to be like that is it? <laughs> no. Okay well there's not a lot we're going to be able to see under there so we'll grab the diagnostics and we'll plug it in and we'll see whether it says anything. Ari Park to heart.co.uk to win. Copyright. I have. Spilling me tea everywhere. There's no real way to put me tea. I don't think you can put tea in a cup holder, can you? Doesn't really work. I'll just, just balance it on there, it'd be fine. Enter VIN. Well, that was pretty pointless, wasn't it? <sighs> So we have got the Audi wallet, but I believe there is no service history. No. Okay, so it had read the VIN. That will identify what the car is. It is a Cabriolet. It is not US or Canadian. Ah, what's the point in reading the VIN? I've got no idea what engine it is. So I don't know if it's a BRC, a BPW, a BRF, a BRE. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Okay, so this is 138 brake horsepower, which equivalents to 101 brake horsepower. I'm just going to go for that one. Ah. Should do a gateway scan. Oh, right, okay. Is it maybe it's either the wrong engine or the gateway scan is basically the gateway is a unit inside a lot of later Audis which interrogates all the rest of the ECUs. So the gateway will know all the codes in the all the other ECUs without actually scanning each individual ECU. It's the gateway that controls all the other ECUs. So let's do an auto scan. If it doesn't find the engine control module. See, I think that there's a bigger problem here. Is a failure of the electrics or something. Something is failing and shorting, shorting out. So it's not finding that, is it? What have we got? What have we got in the CD player? Chick flick diaries. 
awesome. <laughs> Chick flick diaries and heart. Not making assumptions here, but. So it hasn't found the engine ECU. So I'm either selected the wrong engine, which is possible, but generally these machines, they, they it doesn't matter what you tell it, it, it will find it anyway. But I will, when this is finished scanning, I will find out what the engine code is and double check, because all of these will be relevant. There's quite a lot of faults in there, isn't there? And the fact that it's had a replacement wrap battery thrown in it wouldn't necessarily explain why it didn't start though. Electronic roof control, uh, it explains why the roof don't work. I was speaking to a mate of mine about this car, I was telling him about it, he said, I bet the roof don't work. <laughs> uh, currently it does not, no, currently it does not work. But that's just a technicality, that's just something minor, probably. Heated seats, I think it's quite a nice spec model. The heated seats, the air con, the auto lights, I'm assuming it's got auto wipers, I don't really know. If it's got auto lights, it's more likely to have um, auto wipers as well. It doesn't actually say anything on the stalk. I do like an Audi. There is, there is something about an Audi. The, the smell and the, the feel of the drive of them. I know it's in a cabriolet and it'll feel like a jelly mould, feel like a jelly driving it down the road, but they're generally, you know, they're, they're nice, the nice, it, feeling of um, quality and expense. Right, I've just had a look at the V5 and the engine code is BPW, Bravo Papa Whiskey. So I will double check that, but it hasn't found the ECU, which it would have done no matter what the engine code was anyway. So we got a lot of faults here. I'm not gonna go through them all because uh, there can't be that many faults unless they're just random electronic, you know, uh, central locking faults and stuff like that. So let's go into transmission. So it can't find the ECU. Okay. So a lot of these are going to be lost communication. This is obviously going to be the ABS one. Yeah. See, a lot of these codes are going, they're going to be completely pointless. Air conditioning, no gas, probably. System low, pressure. So it's not an injector problem. High pressure sensor, yeah, here you go. So it's got no gas in it. Electronic roof control. Uh, steering cool. okay. What's the roof got to do with the steering column electronics control module? So some cars, if there's a code in the ECU, it won't work. Some cars, if there's a code in the ECU, it will work if it can work at that particular point. So some cars, you have to clear the code for it to work. And if there's a code there, it won't work. Let's just clear all the codes. It's quite a clever bit of kit, really, these diagnostics. Uh, this one was about 350 quid. And there's a yearly subscription you have to uh, to get the updates every year and I haven't done it yet because I'm considering getting another one a more powerful one but the yearly subscription goes up which you know this I think is 200 quid or 100 quid or something like that a year might be 100 quid can't remember per year to get the updates which you don't really need unless you're working on new cars but yeah the the, the more modern ones that have you know the um, TPMS the time monitoring systems, um, a lot of them have a lot more powerful, you know, processes in them, bigger screen, that kind of thing. But the yearly subscription is a lot more, which has kind of put me off. Um, I know Top Don do one, which I've looked looked at. I don't. I was thinking of buying one for the giveaway, but I don't think I'm going to have enough money for my payment from YouTube to be able to buy one of those. And I don't know how good they are. You know, I know I know these are good, but I don't know if the top dons are as powerful as these. Um, I've seen a few other people using them, but I haven't really looked at any. Okay, so let's go back. So that's the engine code. Which is what, 103, which works out about what I thought it was. 
so now we'll see if it will find the engine control module because it's the right one and now I can go in and I can manually select what ECU I want it to look for so I want it to look for the engine control module no so that's the fault no can't find the ECU it's just weird, it's so random. How can you just the ECU just disappear? No. So the roof still doesn't work, but I don't know if the engine has to be running for that. Anyway, we're getting distracted. We're getting distracted. We're getting distracted. Okay, let me regroup and see what I'm gonna do. Well, I wish I'd caught that on video. because all I did, I left the ignition on and I go back a bash and I heard a click things started to whir and the PRD light on the uh, dash there stopped flashing cranked, fired straight up so now we are going to be able to go into the ECU and it's got no trouble codes <laughs> ah. amazing engine control I don't know why there's two engine control modules or engine control module two could be shorthand for meaning something else or it thinks it's got one or there you go so now I don't think it will do a gateway to no, function is not supported. So, if I do another auto scan, now we'll clear all of the faults in everything else, and we'll see if stuff like the roof and stuff starts working. I'm not quite sure what's in that box. Um, I'm assuming there's relays in there and wiring, so it could be a faulty relay, a sticky relay. It sounds like it might be. These engines aren't very refined, but they're a good, reliable engine. We've got a load of codes again, so again, I'm going to clear them all. Now it's obviously found communication with the ECU. And it will automatically come back and tell me immediately what's come back because it will clear the code and it will scan it and then it will come back as either pass or fault it made me laugh actually in one of the comments of one of my videos someone mentioned about the fact that everyone's an expert when they get diagnostics yeah all right mate okay so it's found two faults so in the central the roof still isn't working. Uh, central module comfort system, alarm horn, no communication. Um, and radio, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no. Yeah, it's lovely when people say that. Yeah, no, well, which one is it? I guess I need to drive it to get rid of all of these lights on the dashboard. Or is that because I'm in diagnostic mood? Hello, radio, CD changing, no signal communication, don't care. They don't do nothing. Right, so I went back in to the car selection and selected auto, which selected the VIN, which they then asked me if it was a cabriolet, and now it's showing electronic roof control. So I would assume that there's gonna be a fault in this or another module connected to it. I'm going a little bit off piste here, to be honest, because I wasn't planning on going into no fault code detected. Um, live data. When I press the switch, it doesn't know that I've pressed the switch. That's it, I'm pretty much done now with the diagnostics. Nothing more I really I can do now in the weather, in the rain. I, I'm assuming there's no codes in the ECU, so this is all gonna go once I start driving it. But I just, again, I can't work out this roof, so I just thought I'd pop this out. And it's not even plugged in. 
So why would you unplug it unless it's faulty and it gets stuck? I don't really want to risk it in the rain. Yeah, it's now going to start working. He says. Yeah, there's obviously some fault with the roof because something unlatches there, the windows go down, and then when you push the wood to go back up, you can hear a click up there. Right, so I'm gonna leave that there on this video, just a bit of a walk round, did I do a walk round? I think I did, on this Audi A4. Uh, next thing I'll do is obviously look into, get that box open, find out what the engine management, EC, uh, engine management relay is, uh, and have a look at that and if I can swap that relay for another relay it might be a bit it might you know I bashed that fuse box and it it came to life so I'm assuming there's something in that fuse box a corroded contact a sticky relay something like that so that I need to look at to that next but not today so Thank you very much for watching. If you've got this far, I hope you found something interesting interesting from the video. And as usual, like, subscribe, share, and uh, I shall see you in the next video. Cheers.